In this video, we will talk about pin change interrupts, which are functionally very similar to external interrupts, but have some slight differences in their functionality and use different registers to control them. So let's start by looking at our Arduino pinout diagram again. And this time again, ignore most of the numbers and acronyms here. Now we're going to look at this PC int column. So as you can imagine, PC int stands for pin change interrupt. And you'll notice that unlike the external interrupts int 0 and int 1, which were only available on pins 2 and 3, we have pin change interrupts available on every one of the Arduino's digital pins. However, there is a key difference here. While the interrupts are available on every pin, there are only three interrupt service routines linked to the pin change interrupts. So multiple pins can trigger a single interrupt service routine. So to explain that a little further, let's hop over to the Atmega 328P datasheet, and we are going to look at the page for the PCICR register, or Pin Change Interrupt Control Register. And looking at the register, it just has three bits in it. Let's read the description for this first bit here, PCIE2. So when the PCIE2 bit is set, meaning it's set to 1, Ignore this part about the SREG, that means enabling global interrupts with that SEI command. That enables pin change interrupt 2. And here's the key part. Any change on any enabled PC int 23 to 16 pin will cause an interrupt. So there's two, two key, key parts here. Let's break down this sentence. The first is any change. So unlike the external interrupts, which gave us the option to select a rising edge, a falling edge, or both, this is always going to trigger on either a rising edge or a falling edge. So that's the first major difference between this and an external interrupt. The pin change interrupt does not let you select rising edge or falling edge. It will always do both. And then the next is on any enabled PC int 23 to 16 pin. So if we go back to our pinout diagram here. So here we have PC int 23 through 16. So any individual pin that we enable here will trigger pin change interrupt two. So we could have multiple pins trigger a single interrupt service routine. And then finally, PC int 23 to 16 pins are enabled individually by the PC MSK2 register. And this repeats the same thing for the other two interrupt service routines. We're not going to read both of those. Let's skip ahead to the PC MSK2 register which is in a couple more pages. So this register, the pin change mask register two, contains individual bits that enable the interrupts on individual pins. So for example, if I wanted to enable a pin change interrupt on PC int 22, which I can see on my diagram here is Arduino pin six, then I would need to set this bit to one in this register. And since PC int two is part of the pin change interrupt two, I would also need to set this bit to one in the PCICR register. So again, don't worry if that didn't make sense with me jumping around the data sheet here. Let's go back to the example code and see that. So you can see what I have in my circuit here is two buttons connected to two different pins. I have a button connected to pin five and a button connected to pin six. And if I run the code, either one of these buttons will turn the LED on. So I'm using both buttons to control a single LED. And you could imagine, for example, if you had a robot with multiple bump sensors on it, and if you just had a single function you wanted to execute when the robot bumped into something, then this could serve that function. It's a story for another day that you could also combine the inputs from those sensors with logic gates. But again, that's a topic for a different lecture. So if we look at our code, you'll notice that we only have one interrupt service routine here. So again, both of these buttons, which are connected to two different pins, are contributing to a single interrupt. So let's stop the simulation and take a look at the code. So again, this code is very similar to what we wrote using external interrupts. We still have our main function where we use the DDR and port registers to set up the data direction and pull up resistors for our input and output pins. Now, instead of the EICR and EIMSK registers, we have PCICR and PCMSK2. So these are the registers that set up and control the pin change interrupts as opposed to external interrupts. 
In this case, I am writing the bit to one to enable the pin change interrupt two. And then I have two buttons connected to two different pins that I still need to enable individually. So I am writing those bits to one in PCMSK2. And remember, I got that information from my data sheet. I have to go look at which bits I need to set to one, both in the PCICR register and in, in my case, based on the pins I took, chose the PCMSK2 register, but if I had chosen different pins corresponding to a different interrupt, I may need to use the PCMSK1 register. For example, say I had a button connected to Arduino pin 11, which is PCINT3. I would need to look around and say, okay, PCINT3 isn't in this register, I need to keep going. Okay, PCINT3 is in the PCMSK0 register, so I would need to use a different register to enable that interrupt. But here I've used PCMSK2, I've written those two bits to one, and I'm also using the SEI command to enable interrupts globally. I still have my while loop with a delay command that's in there just to represent what if we had a whole bunch of other code that took a really long time to run. And then I have my ISR up here at the top. I have a different argument for the ISR. So again, you can look this information up. We have a table with all of the different vector names for the different interrupts. So previously we used int zero for the external interrupt. Now we are using PC int two for pin change interrupt request two. And I have the same code inside the interrupt to just toggle the LED when the button is pressed or released. So again, I can run this and either button will control the LED because I have enabled both of those pins and then they are both causing the code to jump to the same interrupt. So your assignment for this setup is to duplicate this circuit on Arduino pins 8 through 13. So you can choose exactly which pins you want to use, but you should have two buttons that both control a single LED. So to figure that out, you will need to look at the Arduino pinout diagram, figure out which PC int bits correspond to the pins you are using, and then you will need to look at the atmega 328p datasheet to figure out which PCMSK register you need to use and then which bit or bits you need to set in the, oops, sorry, in the PCICR register, again, based on the pins you have selected. And then at the end, you should get the same behavior where your two buttons can both control a single LED. You can also think about the difference between external interrupts and pin change interrupts now that you've seen them both and scenarios where maybe you would want to choose one over another. So it doesn't really matter for these simple circuits we've been building with just one or two LEDs or buttons, but you could imagine if you are building something more complicated like a robot with lots of sensors and actuators and you're really starting to take up a lot of your Arduino pins, then you're going to have to start thinking a little more carefully about the functionality available on different pins. Again, you only have two of those external interrupts, whereas you have pin change interrupts available on more pins. We also have special features we haven't talked about yet, like timers and pulse width modulation, which are only available on certain pins. So as your circuit gets more complex, you have to start thinking about your pin real estate a little more. So that's something to take into account in the future.